Hey T Heads, this is Don from Mayleaf in this video, dipping into Fig Dipper. Finally, we get to launch this ripe poor tea. There's a whole backstory around this tea if you don't know it. I'll put some links in the description below, but just an overview, we sourced this ripe pua for release this summer, summer 2019. So we sourced it in spring 2019. We were very excited to introduce this tea to the world. And then we had a bit of a problem with our friends at Customs. Our supplier or our agent declared the tea in the invoice, declared the tea in the packing list, but on the bill of lading, which is the third document that you need, he only wrote tea wares. He didn't write tea and tea wares, which made this tea and other tea in the consignment technically illegal. There was a whole battle. Thankfully, lots and lots of you helped out for us to win the appeal, but because tea is a perishable item, even though this improves with age, the Port Health decided that they would destroy the tea before the appeal process was finished. So we won the appeal, we got a paltry amount of money back, but somewhere sitting in a dumpster um, in the UK is some of the most fine tea on the planet. I wonder where that tea is now. So what we did is we went back to the original farmer and we said, can you trace who you sold your loose tea to? It was a bit of an act of defiance. We wanted to make sure that we got Fig Dipper. We managed to buy back at a higher price, of course, from wholesalers, the uh, loose ripened tea, and we pressed Fig Dipper for you. So here it is, Fig Dipper is here. It's a bit late coming. And we are certainly, we've certainly had a lot of trials and tribulations with this tea, but as I said, act of defiance, a little sneer and snub and a bit of an eye roll to the Port Health Customs people for their ridiculousness. We needed to make sure that this tea came into stock. Design, as always, by Celine, the otter bathing in a barrel in a beautiful Mediterranean scene with fig leaves in the background and eating a fig newton. So you can guess some of the flavor profiles of this tea already. Very excited. Let me show you the cake. Here we go. It's been a while since we've unveiled a ripe pua for you. As I said, the plan was that this would be released in the summer. Here you go. Hopefully you get a good view of that. There it is, Fig Dipper, beautiful, nice color, isn't it? It's lovely chocolate carob brown color. Let's quickly scope this tea so you know everything about it. This is season spring 2012, so it's a seven year old tea. It was fermented and ripened in 2012, in the latter part of 2012. It's been stored loose and has been pressed for us in 2019. Cultivar is the Daiye Zhong variety. Origin is, this is tea from Bulang in Yunnan in China. Picking and processing is going to be a bud and young leaves. Elevations about 1,100 meters. Right. Let's see how easy this is to break. Oh, pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. Nice compression on it. Ripe pua is always going to be more compressed than raw simply because the leaves are smaller. They've broken down during that fermentation and ripening phase of the processing and therefore it'll compress more because there'll be less air because they are smaller particles. Let's weigh this up. Let's do this a little bit more properly. Let's see. I'm going to brew in my Blue guy one here, maybe blue guy one. Use it to measure. What are we gonna do? I reckon around seven or eight grams. Ah, 9.2, that will do. Okay, so put this away. Lovely, lovely color as you can see. Let's wrap this up quickly. Oh, 
I'll wrap it up better later. Lovely, lovely artwork. Celine is rocking them at the moment. Okay, so kettle on. Now, I have not tasted this since it's arrived back in and I want to sample it in both Gen Shui and porcelain. So I've got my Gen Shui cup here. For those of you who don't know, this is our pixel square design. We've got teapots and cups, but it's always useful to have a cup um, simply on the basis that you can take, you can brew in porcelain and then taste the difference that Gen Shui would make. I also don't have a scoop here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pour the leaves into the lid of the guy one because I want to heat up this guy one get it nice and steamy so that I can smell those dry leaves that's it nice and warm so let's see how easy it is for these to break up take your time with it you don't want to break too much it's inevitable with ripe poor so don't get too hung up about it of course it's going to break up it's a fermented tea there'll be more of the tea dust etc which is why you're probably going to be brewing through a filter unlike raw poor which we like to brew unfiltered breaks up nice and easy it's good compression and of course it will open up more so you don't have to worry about loosening every single little pellet that's good enough right time to smell fig dipper let's see okay it's got a savory note it's got a, a slight creamy malty note but i'm hit with a very savory uh, fermented note so it's got a slight wodoi smell, but instead of that wodoi smell being in the sort of fishy territory, it's more in the, um, for those of you who know Marmite, and for those of you who dislike Marmite, relax. Once you rinse this, it's not gonna taste like it, but the smell is that sort of Marmite or Vegemite, which is a sort of yeast extract smell. It's got a little bit of a little tiny, tiny bit of smoked salmon, but very, very light and very, it's actually really engaging. It's very nice. It's like smelling a smoky whiskey, but I'm also getting figs, dark, dark, reduced down fig jam. And as I said, a little bit of malt, but an interesting salty, savory note going on. Color of the leaves sort of raisin brown color but with lighter flecks for the buds let's give this a rinse and see what the rinse does usually very transformative from dry to wet leaf more than a lot of teas oh whoa wow wow like an alcoholic rum notes happening very distinct rum notes i'm still getting a little bit of the smokiness but it's more like a campfire that's being put out so a campfire the next morning when you wake up and it's been rained on so it's not smoky so much but you've got that char i'm getting leather i'm getting figs for sure those fig newtons that the uh the otter here is eating is very, very much in effect, but it's like a boozy rum fig Newton. There's a slight fruity note, but the fruit is very sweet, like, like a blueberry muffin. Yeah, blueberry muffins, rum soaked fig Newtons, a campfire that's been put out and some leather notes wow very heady really complex sweet fruity oh i'll warm up these cups a little bit in fact let me just give them a bit of water just to warm up especially that clay right so let's brew this baby up And we'll brew for, I don't know, 25 seconds. 
as always with me, it's going to be a bit ad lib. But I like to brew that first infusion a little bit more potent, especially when I'm doing these videos because I know I can't roll through so many infusions with all of you out there. You're busy people, you've got things to do, I'm sure. But I'm so thrilled that I finally get to taste Fig Dipper with you. Ugh, the amount of letters we've written to customs about this tea. Color, rum-like, aged rum. Lovely cask aged rum. Look. Oh, mineral as well. Not just fruits, woods. Oh, wow. Slight creaminess. I could really stick my nose in that for ages. Okay, here we go. Let's taste first infusion of Fig Dipper. As I said, color is a gorgeous dark rum brown color. Okay, cheers. The, the texture on the, the top of the liquid looks a little bit oily. It's got a sort of sheen to it. Oh, texture is soft. Soft at the beginning, but then quite quickly, it comes with a bright mineral note. So soft to bright, mineral and a little bit juicy. Taste. Leather, blueberries, some antique woods. So this uh, wooden barrel which the Fig Dipper is bathing in. That wooden barrel is definitely being represented in the tea. So some sort of antique woods. Not that I've eaten many antique woods, but you know the smell of mahogany, something like that. A varnished leather, a little bit of date syrup, so sweetness coming through. This is the first infusion. It's gonna get sweeter and sweeter and sweeter. But I'm noticing a little bit of that datey dried fruit sweetness. Let's see how it tastes in the Genshui. Texture is so nice, very bracing. If you want one of those teas, that's going to be a really lovely digestive stripping your mouth full of sort of, if you've had a heavy meal or as a wake up in the morning, in this case, it's morning here in London. It's a great way to wake up. Oh, much thicker, much softer. A lot of people don't realize how instant the effect clay has on the tea. Instantly a lot thicker. A lot softer. Taste profile is similar, but so much thicker and softer. A little bit less of those mineral notes, those sort of bracing notes, so it's rounded it out, but the flavor is pretty similar. Right. Second infusion is where the tea really starts to show itself in terms of flavor. I'm not gonna waste any of this though. Mm. It's got a creamy character as well. Not as creamy as After Party Enchanter. After Party Enchanter, for those of you who know, sadly no longer with us After Party Enchanter. Once they've gone, they're gone. A lot of people write to me saying, when are you gonna get that batch of Puerti? And it's a batch, so once it's gone, it's gone. But um, After Party Enchanter was very fudgy and creamy. This is definitely more mineral. It's definitely got more bracing quality to it. But there is a creaminess there, and look at the color of that. Now we are starting to move into very, very dark rum. Coffee tones happening. Not too much sediment or residue coming out. And I have to say, immediately from the rinse onwards, so from the smell of those wet leaves and all the way through for first infusion, and I'm sure onwards, all of that slight Wodoi smell has dissipated. And as I said, it was more of a Marmite smell rather than anything that was unenticing. Here we go. Back to back, porcelain v. Genshui. 
porcelain first. Get the clear, neutral flavor. Mm, starting to pick up some of those fig, deep fig jam notes, fig newtons. But again, fig newtons dipped in very strong rum, like serious proof rum. Some of that Jamaican stuff. This tea is not messing around. It's got a real ferment. It's not alcoholic, believe me, but it's got a real fermented taste to it. A real sort of boozy taste to it with all of that carob and fig and date sweetness. Still those wood notes coming through. A little bit of those bourbon casks. Slightly charred, just ever so slightly charred. And the finish, rather than rushing through, the finish is dry on my tongue, juicy on the sides. The juiciness is very isotonic, like saline, like slightly, slightly salty, which, which makes you want to drink more, right? It has that taste that comes from those isotonic drinks in it. Really, really lovely. Soft, softer, thicker, smoother, more oily on the finish. I'm not sure which one I prefer, to be honest. I really like that dry mineral quench that comes from the porcelain, but this one is an altogether more luxurious finish, more velvety finish. And that's why grabbing yourself, if you don't want to invest in a Gen Shui pot, grab yourself a Gen Shui cup there much less price, of course, than the, the pots. They're handcrafted. They still have the slip inlay. It still has, this is not paint, this is clay. If you haven't seen the video all about Gen Shui teaware, then go check it out. I'll put a link in the description below. Mm, a great way to sample AB, the same tea, and see how the clay affects it. But definitely the texture is more oily. Let me run through some infusions and I'll come back with some final thoughts. All right, sixth infusion, no, seventh infusion here that I'm brewing. So I've had six infusions. This tea has a real character to it. Something quite different to the other one, other ripe pours that we've had. It's quite, it's quite adult. As I said, it's quite boozy and I'm, I'm left with a couple of images. I like to sort of create imagery, as you probably know, when I'm drinking these teas. And there are sort of two images that really continue to stick out for me. The first is sitting in a hot country, maybe where this fig dipper is, a Mediterranean hot, hot country, drinking a shot of very strong, strong sort of rum or alcohol of some kind, overproof with some dates, so eating dried dates and sipping on some very boozy alcohol. It's just got this very adult taste to it. Um, it's, not, it's not astringent like alcoholic, but it's just got this reminiscent note of the aftertaste of having a really, really nice, strong rum. The other side of the equation the other image that I'm getting is those figs, fig newtons, dried figs, but eaten in a, maybe a library with antique woods and leather and just, it's got that real sort of, um, that real personality, that sort of old antique personality to it. So figs eaten, dried figs eaten in a library fill, full of leather and antique woods and dates eaten in a hot country with a nice strong shot of a local booze. All right, I'm filling these cups very high because I want to have a sniff of this empty Gong Dao Bay. Mmm, oh. So I'm getting that date, date syrup, very deep, deep date syrup, strong, sweet note, but I'm also getting that leather and I'm also getting that charred wood again. 
a little bit of a charred wood. Yeah, so imagine that charred bourbon barrel that this uh, fig dipper is bathing in. Imagine that charred wood, date syrup and leather. The body effect on this is warming, definitely lovely and warming, definitely digestive. I can feel my stomach being activated. I can feel like it's helping to stimulate digestion. I haven't eaten anything today, so it's making me feel a bit hungry, but I can imagine that this would be an incredible digestive, very, very nice after a heavy, heavy meal. The finish in my mouth is sweet and juicy, um, but the sweetness is again not a fresh fruit sweetness or a simple syrup sweetness. It's very much that sort of much more mature uh, fig jam, date syrup, dark, um, dark fruity, stewed down fruity sweetness. It's just such a captivating tea because it's got such a an adult taste to it. You, you just keep getting drawn to having a bit more. And as I said, it's got a slightly salty, sweet finish. So you feel like you just want to drink a little bit more. So there you go. Fig Dipper is in town. Very, very happy to launch this cheeky little fella. A little bit late, but better late than never. There you go. Fig Dipper is in town. That's it, tea heads. Check out our other videos, taste our teas wherever you are in the world by browsing Mayleaf.com and come and visit our tea house if you're ever in London. Other than that, I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye. Mm -mm -mm.